Right, it's time now for business, and Emmanuel Abaji Yafe has joined me, but even as he joins me, we, we're still standing with the police, so we have the hashtag going, mm -hmm. I stand with GH Police, and we're hoping that people would volunteer information so that we can actually get to the perpetrators of this dastardly act. You're right, easy. I stand with the police too. All right, you take it away. Thank you very much, and good evening. Thank you for joining me on business tonight. Deputy Minister for Communications, George Anda, has emphasized the ministry's commitment uh, space for Ghanaians as the nation embarks on a digitization agenda. According to the Deputy Minister, improving cybersecurity is key on government's agenda to ensure that citizens can operate on digital platforms without being exposed to dangers online. George Anders spoke at the launch of the Huawei IP Club that seeks to train and certify IT professionals. Under the theme Rethinking IP for the Digital Economy, the Huawei IP Gala brought together ICT and telecom industry experts and top Huawei executives to discuss latest technology innovations in the world of IT. Deputy Communications Minister George Anders stressed the need to boost cybersecurity measures as the country embarks on a digital transformation. We need to look at the hygiene factors and making sure that we have the right environment that is, that is secure for, um, for the citizenry, for all stakeholders is extremely important. And that's why we keep on talking about the need for all of us to take cybersecurity seriously because um, from the government point of view, if we don't have a robust cybersecurity system in place, um, our, our, our platforms are extremely vulnerable. From the citizens' point of view, there's not enough awareness about cybersecurity. You have a situation where our kids are on the internet, they are chatting with strangers who did not know they are making um, sexual offers to them. And, and our kids become extremely vulnerable. So from the platform point of view, we need to make sure that we put in place the right measures to have a secure ecosystem so that all the stakeholders can, can, uh, can get the benefits of, 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 of our digitization agenda. The Huawei IP Gala also saw the launch of the Huawei IP Club. It aims at training and certifying IT professionals. Tommy Zue is the managing director for Huawei Ghana. Huawei is not a company only for the business, but also we take the CSR, the social, res social responsibilities. So also we commit that in the next three years, we should train at least 1,000 ICT talents from Ghana. So start from this, I mean, we planned and organized a lot of events, especially on last year, December, we officially launched the Huawei ICT training lab. In, in Accra. So based on this lab and uh, the, the, the training center, we invite I mean, different talents and in different level of the talents. Some is the beginners, some is the already experienced to attend the, the trainings. So we wanted them the skills or the ICT levels could be improved. And uh, this one is like uh, the second step for the part of the training. So we should uh, I mean, to make a propaganda to everybody, to welcome everybody to join the, the ICT trainings. For Joy Business, Sheila Tamaklo reporting. Now, insurance companies in the country have been urged to meet the industry's new capital requirements before the deadline elapses to avoid revocation of their licenses. Speaking at the launch of Enterprise Advantage mobile app in Accra, the Insurance Commissioner, Justice Yawufuri, reiterated it's time the regulator enforces the insurance laws rigorously. This morning, this report. At the launch of the Enterprise Mobile app in Accra, the CEO of the Enterprise Group, Kelly Gajekpo, reiterated the company's resolve to satisfy its customers. Mr. Gajekpo believes the Enterprise Advantage Mobile app will give customers express service at their convenience. The Enterprise Advantage app, the only app in this Algeria country that allows you to conduct insurance and pensions transactions end to end on your phone. The first reason is convenience. The Advantage app is actually a digital distribution platform. So when it comes to insurance and pensions, you can do everything from getting a quotation through purchasing, payment, and even making a claim just from the comfort of your office or from the sofa in your home. Sitting there, you're watching TV, pa, 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 you're done. 
The Insurance Commissioner, Justice Ofori, re-echoed the regulator's aim to clean up the insurance sector, stating that the timeline given to insurance companies to meet their capital requirements will not be reviewed. He believes the current low capital level of these insurance companies makes it difficult for them to venture into the oil and gas industry and to absorb high risk. The oil field, uh, the, 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 the risk involved is very high and um, our market hasn't got the capacity to actually take all the risk. So and, these are, and these are some of the reasons why we ask in the insurance companies to increase their minimum capital so that they can absorb much of the, of the risk. In addition to that, the industry has set up an oil and gas pool that actually absorbs some of the excesses. These are all attempts being made by the industry to retain much of the businesses before the leftover is sent outside. But the, but the oil and gas is a big business and the insurance companies in Ghana need to build bigger and larger capacities to absorb much, much of the risk. He said the new requirements will safeguard the interests of insurance policyholders to boost confidence in the industry. Fred Ho's report for Joy Business. Now, after months of struggling to reclaim her 7,000 Ghana CDs from a defunct savings and loans company, Hana has vowed never to entrust her money with any other financial institution. Hana is one of thousands of affected entrepreneurs in the recent cleanup of the savings and loans sector. Although the exercise was expected to, in the long run, build confidence in the space, the results of our checks seems otherwise. It's Karen Dodo's report. <laughs> Lack of finance has always been one of the major barriers facing women entrepreneurs, particularly those in marginalized communities. In this regard, some financial institutions have done their best to reach out to these women as part of the financial inclusion agenda. The women at Malata Markets tell me how several financial institutions usually visit them, presenting various financial products and packages to get them enrolled. <laughs> Hannah is one of the numerous women who turned to a savings and loans company as a source to obtain credit. Unfortunately, this did not go as planned. For 20 years, she kept her savings with Midland Savings and Loans, one of the affected institutions in the recent cleanup. After hearing news of a customer who was maltreated simply for trying to reclaim her money in July 2018, Hannah knew it was time to go back for her money. After a customer was manhandled at Midland, most of us market women decided to go for our monies. But it has not even been possible since then. It has been one promise after the other. Now that the Bank of Ghana has taken over, let's see how it goes. Although her confectionery business seems steady, she blames the slow progress in the damage that happened to the financial sector due to the reforms. With over 7,000 cities frozen, she believes she could have grown her business further. Business has been so slow. The money I saved is profit from my business. So now, how do I save my business when my money is stuck there? I want to restock, but I don't have any extra money to do that. And I don't want to consider going for a loan because I might not be able to pay back. I just need my money to grow back my business. It's been over a year now since Hannah first made attempts to get back her money from the defunct institution. Now with government stepping in, a receiver has been appointed to help ensure that monies are paid back to all affected investors. Hannah is just hoping that this process by government would indeed help her to retrieve all her money. I am hopeful that the Bank of Ghana will indeed give me back the money as it has promised. Also, in reaction to the current development within the savings and loans sector, co-founder of the defunct UT Bank, Prince Kofi Amwabing, has blamed uh, the situation on the lack of scrutiny by the regulator. I will add the numbers. I say how many microfinance companies 
were licensed, how many savings and loans companies were licensed, and what were the criteria that they go through through process. The problem with Ghana is that we always throw away the process and the institutions. When I was looking for licenses for UT Financial Unique Trust Financial Service, the application to Bank of Ghana went to the Ministry of Interior. For Minister of Interior, it was handed over to the BNI. And the BNI went to every place that I had been, my school, my village, to check on me before the license was issued. In recent times, because of politics and the way we play politics, it's a matter of, oh, this is my nephew, give her a license, give her a license, give this person a license. So lines were issued anyhow in so much numbers to all sorts of people. That is what created the problem. The people were not checked properly. Well, so we'll bring you some more interactions with Prince Kofi Amwabing in the second segment when I return after 8 p.m. That's it for now.